Welcome everybody. My name is Andreas Meyer and I'm the host of the Pattern Recognition Symposium. This is a small conference that we are hosting every semester and this semester it has been completely online, which is the reason why we can present a selection of the presentations to you in this online format. So the next presentation will be given by Camilo Vasquez and it's entitled Gamma Tone convolutional filters. So, Camilo, the stage is yours. Hello everybody, thanks for the introduction. So I will talk about my recent research on gamma tone convolutional filters for end-to-end -end learning in speech signals. So since several years ago, deep learning has gained a tremendous impact in different speech processing methods, specifically on speech recognition, but also in other applications like speaker verification, emotion, rec emotion recognition, pathological speech classification and modeling, speech synthesis, music classification, among other stuff. The main question for the deep learning methods in speech processing is how to format the input data to the neural network. We can use pre-computed features or we can use different spectral representations like male spectrograms, or just we can use the raw waveform, the raw waveform for an end-to-end -end learning scheme. So the first, in the first case, the, the use of pre-computed features like phonation, articulation, or prosody, they are good for the interpretability of the network, especially for clinical, for clinical applications. But in general, they are not robust enough for most of applications. So in the second case, when we use like spectral representations like the ML spectrograms, still, uh, Many researchers use still computer vision architectures to model these uh, time series models like AlexNet, ResNet, UNet, and or whatever. So even people from the lab, even myself, we used to do that in the past. Currently, there are novel strategies to process speech signals based on spectral representations using spectrograms like the one that Thomas showed before using only vertical or horizontal kernels to model frequency or temporal features. So in general, the, these spectral representations like the MELA spectrogram are, they were really good. I mean, you can obtain basically state of the art results, but in general, the models are visually or they are inspired still from the computer vision community. So in the third case, we have the, the raw waveform or an end-to-end -end learning approach. And this is what we would like to talk, that I would like to talk to you today. There are two very well-known architectures for end-to-end -end modeling in speech signals. The first one is the WaveNet. It was designed mainly for speech synthesis applications. And the second one is the SingNet, used for speaker identification using bandpass sign filters in the convolutional layers. So, but our aim is, or well, our approach here is that we want to define filters for a convolutional neural network that are inspired by the hearing perception with the aim to gain interpretability in the learning process which is very important, especially for clinical applications. Specifically, you can see it here in the left part of the figure. This is the complete auditory system. And this part here corresponds to the cochlea. So the cochlea is just a set of a tube, I mean, a rolling tube uh, with different nerves attached to it in different lengths, different positions. 
and each nerve is in charge of getting of getting uh, specific frequencies from the speech signals. You can see here the first part of the cochlea or the basilar membrane, which is how it's called this, models or it's able to reconstruct these high frequencies from the speech signals. Then as soon as you advance in the basilar membrane, you have here the lower frequencies of the speech. So how can we model this behavior with a neural network? We can use gamma-tone filters. One way to achieve this is the use of the gamma-tone filters, which are a linear filter described by an impulse response that is the product of a gamma distribution and a sinusoidal zone. So the natural response of the filter is shown here in the equation. The filter has three parameters, which are going to be learned by our neural network. We have the gain, the frequency, and the phase. Hence, we can define a number of filters in our convolutional layers that are going to be automatically learned via backpropagation to learn these three parameters, the gain, the phase, and the frequency. If we unroll the basilar membrane or the cochlea that I showed before, the frequencies and gains of the learned filters can be related to the actual hearing response of the human ear. If we learn a filter bank like this automatically in a neural network, we can have like a representation totally inspired from the auditory system. So here I present a summary about the comparisons of a general gamma-ton convolutional filter with a traditional 1D convolutional filter that is available in the packages like Python or TensorFlow. Uh, for the gamma-ton convolutional filter, for any kernel size, it depends on, doesn't depend on the length, we only have three parameters to learn, which are the phase, the frequency, and the gain of the, of the gamma-ton filter. The gamma-ton filters are also able to process any temporal context of the speech without additional parameters. We also have interpretable layers, interpretable layers in the gamma-ton, and we also have the known operator like the filter shape of the, in the convolutions. On the contrary, for the normal convolution, one-dimensional convolution, the number of parameters to be learned depends on the kernel size and the length of the convolutions. The normal convolutions also increase the temp the increasing the temporal context in the convolution yields more parameters to learn as well. They are they are also non-interpretable. So the gamma-ton convolutional filters offer a very compact way to derive customized filter banks that only depends on some parameters with a clear physical meaning related to the cochlear response. And also the traditional filters learned by the convolutional neural network often take noisy and weird multiband shapes, especially when few training samples are available. So the filters learned by the normal convolutional layer can make some sense for the neural network, but they do, they do not appeal to the human intuition. So with the use of these gamma-ton convolutional filters, we design a convolutional neural network to process the raw speech signals to solve different classification problems. The first layer, the first layer of our network will be a gamma-ton convolutions to process the raw speech frame and to learn automatically a filter bank with some frequencies, gains, and phase. Then we have two convolutional layers to process some features learned by the gamma-ton filters. Then we have a bidirectional groove layer to model the temporal context of the speech signal. And then we have two classification layers to solve the different problem that I'm going to show you in the next slides. So our proposed model using the gamma-ton filters is tested for two different applications. The first one is the classification 
of Parkinson's disease patients and healthy control subjects using different speech signals. And the second one is a work on emotion recognition from speech. We aim to classify between positive and negative emotions, and we aim to classify as well between high versus low arousal emotions. Regarding the data for the Parkinson's disease classification, we have data from 106 patients and 105 healthy control subjects. All of them are age and gender balance. They are Colombian Spanish native speakers. And we ask the participants to perform different exercises like the, the kokinetic task, like the rapid repetition of pataka, pataka, pataka. They have to read several sentences. They have to read a paragraph among other tasks. For the emotion recognition, we use the IMOCAP corpus, which is a database developed at the University of Dallas. It has 10 different subjects who had 10 different emotions in scripted and in spontaneous scenarios. The data is formed with 10,000 speech segments labeled with 10 different emotions. Also, they have some levels of how positive was the emotion of how negative was the emotion, how excited was the emotion or how relaxed was the speech. Regarding some results with our gamaton convolutional neural network, regarding the first problem, the classification between Parkinson's disease and healthy controls based on speech, these are the results obtained with our gamaton layer we observe that the results for the different speech tasks also are around 85% accuracy. The results with the dialogokinetic tasks are slightly highest because this is a really important task that the patient have to do in a normal uh, phoniatry, phoniatry exercise. They used to have different, to model different articulation phenomena in the speech using this specific speech exercises, so the results can be slightly higher. And regarding our second problem in emotion recognition, we were able to identify between positive and negative emotions with an accuracy nearly to the 95%, which is quite good for the addressed problem. For the high versus low arousal emotions, we just have an accuracy pretty much, much lower, around 68% but this is comparable to other studies performed with the address database. Just, I want to give you with this picture. These are the filters learned by our gamaton layer. You can see that you can check some patterns here. They are, they need more resolutions in the lower frequency parts. Uh, they also have like a standard gain for all the filters. Contrary to the filters learned by a normal com one dimensional convolution, you is diff it's really difficult here to have like a pattern or some interpretation about it. You can see some aspects like most of the filters are focused only on the low resolution part of the spectrum, the lowest frequencies, but you cannot see like uh, or interpret any pattern specifically from the from the learned features, from the learned filters. Just to conclude my talk, we propose a novel convolutional layer for speech modeling inspired by the hearing system using gamaton filters. The proposed model is tested in two different applications with really high results, the Parkinson's disease classification and in emotion recognition. The model seems to be accurate for both models. And finally, I think the most important aspect of this work is that we have more interpretable models than a traditional one-dimensional convolution to process raw speech. For ongoing work, I want to optimize the general architecture of the network to address other problems, including speaker verification, speech recognition, phoneme recognition, among others tasks. So thank you very much for your attention. If there are some questions, 